Hello and welcome. Uh, my name is Darren Kechnowski and I will be the moderator for the webinar this morning. Today's webinar is focused on nutrition information from the Winnipeg Regional Health Authority Living Better program and is the third of four webinars as part of our Tackling the Pillars of Health COVID-19 webinar series. Uh, this series is, gener is generously supported by a grant from Healthy Together Now, a community-led regionally coordinated and government supported grassroots program program to help prevent chronic disease in manitoba thank you healthy together now before we begin i would like to introduce our presenter amy yonda is a professional home economist and provincial uh, coordinator of the get better together program program developed by stanford university called the chronic disease self-management program Amy has worked at the Wellness Institute at Seven Oaks General Hospital for 10 years and has been a facilitator uh, for the Living Better program since 2018. She is an engaging presenter who loves to get others as excited as she is about food, health, and nutrition. We will have time in the end for the presentation pre, uh, presenter to answer any questions uh, you might have, so please make sure to submit them along uh, when we're doing the presentation here uh, in the question sec uh, section or ask the chat in the chat box of your screen uh, i'll be monitoring both that's all for now amy you're up awesome great thank you so much darren uh, yeah, so today I'm going to be talking about nutrition information to enhance your well-being and your mental health. So the uh, Live and Better program is a Winnipeg Regional Health Authority community program designated to bring awareness about general nutrition and physical activity to those with mental health concerns. It is based on the Seniors Wellness Program Living It Up run by the Transcona Council for Seniors. The program is typically offered in person over five weeks and focuses on healthy eating, physical well-being, and social interaction. With in-person programming not being a possibility right now with COVID-19, we wanted to offer the community some of the nutritional content of the program. So this webinar today will take a closer look at Canada's Food Guide and the link between diet and mental health in what I hope is a fun and interactive way. We would encourage you to attend the five-part class in your community should it become available in the future. All right, so we're gonna start off with an introduction to Canada's Food Guide. So this is the newer guide. This guide helps Canadians make wise food choices and eat a variety of healthy foods each day. So it focuses on how your plate should look. So half of your plate should be vegetables and fruits. A quarter should be from whole grains. And then the other quarter should be from the proteins group. In this webinar, we're going to go over the healthy benefits of each section of the plate. First up, vegetables and fruit. So vegetables and fruits are an important part of our diet because they supply us with vitamins and minerals. They are a great source of fiber, which is helpful for proper digestion and bowel health, um, and they can reduce the risk of heart disease and some types of cancer. They also supply us with antioxidants, which I'll talk about more later. So throughout this presentation today, I'm going to be providing you with some mental health tidbits. So here's our first one. The vitamins and minerals found in vegetables and fruits can help with anxiety, depression, poor memory, irritability, and stress. This is just one of the many benefits of vegetables and fruits. So I mentioned I'd talk a little bit more about antioxidants. So antioxidants are naturally found in food and protect our bodies from free radicals that can cause disease like cancer. So pictured here is a sliced apple. So the apple section on the left has turned brown, which is comparable to bad cell damage. This happens because oxygen, a free radical, which is in the air, has oxidized and damaged the cell. The apple section on the right was dipped in lemon juice, which has allowed it to stay white for a longer period of time. This is because the vitamin C in the lemon juice is an antioxidant and prevents the bad cell damage from occurring. 
So vitamins A with beta carotene, vitamin C, vitamin E are all antioxidants that are found in your vegetables and fruits group. So there are a variety of different ways that you can incorporate fruit and vegetables into your daily meals because you do want it to be half of your plate. So up on the screen, we have an option of an apple, apple juice, or fruit punch. So it is suggested that you choose the whole fruit most often because the whole fruit contains only natural sugars and then the peel is often a very good source of fiber. If you do decide to have juice, it is suggested that you drink 100% fruit juice without any added sugar. So juice is to be chosen sometimes. Then we have our fruit punch, our cocktail, or our beverages. These would not actually be considered a serving of fruit on your plate, or I guess in this case your glass, uh, because it contains very little pure fruit juice and has a lot of sugar. So your fruit punch, your cocktail, or your beverages should be chosen less often. This also goes for if you're having any sort of the vegetables, vegetable juice, and vegetable cocktails. So that same kind of arraignment of more often sometimes and less often. Okay, so other ways that we can help you think of ways to incorporate more vegetables and fruits into your day would be to eat a wide variety of vegetables and fruits of different colors in order to maximize your intake of vitamins, minerals, and fiber. So generally, the more vivid fruits and vegetables contain more nutrients. So for example, you'll choose those dark leafy greens as opposed to the iceberg lettuce or sweet potato rather than a white potato. And when you're buying fruits and vegetables at the store, you wanna bring them home wash them and cut them up right away. This makes them easily accessible and will make it probably more likely that you will eat them. Another good trick to encourage you to eat more vegetables and fruits is to keep them where you will see them. So make them visible. So for example, like in this picture here, store them in a see-through or clear container or at eye level in the fridge or counter. So don't have them hidden behind things in your fridge. So having your vegetables and fruits canned or frozen are great options, especially when you can't purchase them in fresh or it's not in season. Canned vegetables are inexpensive, but unfortunately may contain high amounts of salt, so they would need to be rinsed and drained well before you eat them. When you're choosing canned fruit, which is also a good option, make sure to try to find ones that are canned in water or its own juice instead of being in a fruit syrup. So on the right hand side, we have our frozen vegetables and fruits. These are also a great alternative to fresh because all of their nutrients have been locked in during the freezing process. Uh, another bonus for both uh, frozen and canned is that they keep for a really long time. So you don't have to worry about eating them before they go bad. So I mentioned earlier that canned items are great, uh, but they often do have a lot of sodium. So sodium is added uh, to help them keep longer, and let's be honest, sometimes even taste better. So for items that can't be rinsed and drained, such as canned tomatoes, which you often need the juice along with the tomatoes for your recipe, or vegetable drinks, you can't rinse those either, uh, try to select those low sodium options and that will help to reduce your sodium intake. So on both of these pictures here, it says no salt added for your tomatoes and then that's the low sodium V8 drink option. So lastly, to try adding vegetables to your favorite recipes. So if you're already making a soup or you've already planned a stir fry, try adding in a bunch of different vegetables, maybe even something you've never tried before. Pick those vibrant colors um, and then your oatmeal. So instead of just having oatmeal, add some fruit on top. So simply adding vegetables and fruits to things you're already gonna eat in the day, it can go a long way in helping you get the adequate amount of vegetables and fruit. Okay, so I'm gonna switch uh, gears here and we're gonna move on to the other section of our plate. We are going to focus on whole grains. 
So remember, we want a quarter of our plate to include whole grains. So we choose this because they are low in fat, a source of fiber, and the whole grains will supply us energy in the form of carbohydrates, which will fuel our mind and our body. They will also provide vitamins and minerals like B vitamins, iron, zinc, and magnesium. Mental health tidbit number two. So did you know that whole grain foods are great for your mental health? So the food you eat can have a major impact on your mood and how you feel. The brain, just like the rest of your body, depends on energy and nutrients to work. So hunger and a lack of proper energy and nutrients can influence a wide range of mental function, such as sleep patterns, memory, problem solving ability, your emotions, and just your overall thinking. So very important. Okay, so I mentioned whole grain. So let's look at this diagram I have here on the screen that shows you a whole grain and a refined grain. So our whole grain, you'll see, contains all three layers of the grain seed or kernel. It has the outer bran level, the endosperm, and the germ. So the whole grains are rich in vitamins, minerals, and fiber, so it's all intact. Our refined grain, on the other hand, you'll see that the bran and the germ layers have actually been removed. So that means that vitamins and fiber have been lost. So that is why Canada's Food Guide recommends that we consume whole grain foods regularly and that we choose grain products that are lower in fat, sugar, or salt. Okay, time to get you guys included and involved a little bit more in my presentation today. We're going to play a game called Name That Grain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put up a picture of a grain. I'm going to provide you some clues about the grain. And then I'm going to provide you with some multiple choice answers on the screen for you to pick from. So here's the picture of the grain. And I'm going to give you some clues. All right. I am a grain related to the grass family, and I am produced in Manitoba. I am an aquatic grass, less commonly known as a water oat. I am long in shape and dark purple in color. I am high in protein, fiber, niacin, and low in fat. And good news for gluten-free people out there, it's also gluten-free. So I think Darren may have put up the poll already, but if we could put up the poll there for some uh, answers. So you guys can pick out of those ones, which one you think this is. I so think, Darren, I you, think oh. Amy, I think I, I, I showed it and then I closed it immediately. So I'm, yeah. I'm not sure people could choose this or not because I, oh. I botched it. You botched it, Darren, 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 that's I, okay. I'm, I'm sorry. That's okay. We'll do better on the next one. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we have another one right away. I'm sorry, um, everybody. That's okay. So the poll results, if you can see them here, we want you guys to either choose brown rice, wild rice, or buckwheat. So uh, let's see if we can uh, share it here. Poll results, I didn't get anything here. So I'm just going to let you know <laughs> the answer for this one. <laughs> is this one is oh sorry wild you rice oh is it there we yeah go. no <laughs> no no there you we got go. it yay yay okay, so <laughs> this one is wild rice okay darren so hold out we're gonna put mm -hmm. the pull back up in a little bit here okay so the next one is uh, i'm gonna put up the picture so this one i'll read some clues darren and then you can put up the poll <laughs> So I am originally produced in South America. I'm not a true grain actually, but I am related to the family of green leafy vegetables like spinach. I am gluten free. I am a good source of digestible proteins, fiber, iron, magnesium, and phosphorus. Um, and I actually have to be rinsed before cooking to remove my bitter taste. So let's put up this poll for who we think this one is. So if you guys want to answer between those options. 
Oh, we're oh, getting results. Fun. I can see them all up there. Ooh. People are putting in their answers. Yeah. How long should we go? We've got 75% of people have voted here. All right, well, we'll wait a tiny little bit here, see if I can get a few more results. So what do we think this one is? I think I've narrowed it down to two. I'm not totally I, yeah. sure. <laughs> I actually chose two of them on there because they kind of can look similar, actually. So, okay. Uh, I think that's most of our 75% of us have voted. Okay, I'm going to hit the close button. Okay. And Okay, and now I can share choose it. the share. I'll hit the share button. There we go. Woo! All right. So 83% of us chose quinoa and 17% couscous. So the answer for this one is this one's actually quinoa. Um, but yes, couscous and quinoa, depending, this picture may be not as clear as it should be. Uh, they can look similar, but the answer for that one's quinoa. So thanks, guys. That was great. So that's our first kind of run at the poll. So we'll do better for uh, the next time. Okay, so we're going to move on to um, a little bit more content based now for a while. So I've mentioned fiber several times already. So I just want to talk a little bit about what it means in more detail. So fiber is a carbohydrate that is found only in plants. So it's the only part of the plant that can't be digested by the human body. So we need fiber um, as it is an essential nutrient for the normal functioning of our gut. Uh, it helps keep us fuller for longer. It can actually help lower our blood cholesterol because fiber binds cholesterol in the small intestine and helps take it out of the body. It also lowers our blood pressure. It can help prevent constipation. It makes our stools softer and easier to pass. It can prevent colon cancer. And it also has a really great role in helping to keep our blood sugar levels kind of at a nice moderate level or a kind of even level. So it does this by slowing down the release of sugars from the foods that we eat. One important thing though, I don't want you all to just start increasing your fiber in your diet like crazy, because uh, you really wanna make sure that you understand the role of water first. So water and fiber go hand in hand, and it's important that you drink enough water when you're eating a high fiber diet. So think of fiber like a sponge. So it retains water and is always pulling water from our digestive tract as it passes through our system. And so drinking a lot of water helps the fiber pass through, which can help with the, all those benefits that I've listed. Okay, so now we're gonna play another game. So this will be another poll time, Darren. So what we're gonna do is I would like you guys to tell me from these three foods that are pictured, which one you think has the most fiber. So we'll put up the answers here on the screen, Darren. Okay, I'm launching the poll. All right, you do we think it's the yeah, do we think it's okay. the half a cup of baked beans, the half a cup of peach slices, or that egg? Let's see. This is fun. I can watch people as they vote. That's pretty cool. Lots of answers coming in. Yeah. <clears throat> I've, I think it's down to two myself. I'm not 100% sure. I, you didn't provide an answer key in here, Amy. I, <laughs> nope. I'm on the same, I'm on the same guest streak as everybody else here. <laughs> yeah. All right, we've got about 76% of you have voted. Ooh. Yeah. Should I close so this I'll up? start off just by going through. So no one yet has picked an egg, which is uh, great because um, no fiber is going to come from the egg as it comes from an animal. 71% uh, of you uh, picked baked beans, which is ding, 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 the right answer. Uh, and the peach slices has fiber, though. It has 1.3 grams of fiber in those peach slices. Uh, but our baked beans, look at that, a whopping 10.5. So quite a bit of fiber coming from those baked beans. Awesome. Hey, mm -hmm. thank you guys so much for participating. We're going to do three rounds of these because I like this one so much. So we have now 10 grapes, one chicken breast, or a three-quarter cup oatmeal. And we'll put that poll up on the board. Okay, fiber challenge number two coming up. 
All right, so you guys can answer this one. Fiber, hey? Mm -hmm. The peach slices didn't do too hot on the previous one, so I'm guessing it's not the grapes. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Hmm. I'm not seeing any responses yet. Oh, oh I see. I see 100% responses so far. Or oh, 88%. okay. 88. That's right. You're right. I really shouldn't be the guy controlling these buttons. It sounds <laughs> like I'm just doing a terrible job here. <laughs> it's all good. Okay, we got 88% of the votes, and it looks like oatmeal won. Everyone picked oatmeal, so you guys are awesome. So the chicken breast, again, uh, no fiber because it's an animal product. Our grapes do give us some. So for 10 grapes, you get 0 0.6 grams of fiber. And then with oatmeal, you're going to get that 2.7. So ways that you could really add some more fiber to that would just be adding some fruit on top of that, even those peaches that we learned from the first round. That would even bump up that fiber quite a bit. All right, we're gonna play the third round. This time we're looking at uh, corn flakes, uh, a cob of corn, or a tablespoon of peanut butter. So I will get to Darren to put up that poll. Challenge number three. Not to be eaten together. Yeah, that wouldn't be a very good meal together. Oh, there we go. People are putting in the responses now. I got people active now. Holy crow. Corn flakes, corn on the cob, or peanut butter. Although I guess it could end up all going on the cob if you really were creative with these three items. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're all still right. getting responses in yeah, here. Yeah, we're still getting. It's a tough call. All right, should we close this up? Yeah, let's close it up. So we've all got. All right. All right. So I'm going to share the can... results. Yeah. Here we go. All right, so 77% of us picked corn on the cob, 15% picked cornflakes, and 8% with peanut butter. All right, so let's take a peek. With the cornflakes, you're going to get 0 0.7 grams of fiber. Peanut butter, you're, still, you're getting a gram, so that's a pretty big amount for just a little bit of peanut butter. And 4.5 grams of fiber for your corn on the cob. So corn on the cob was the one with the most fiber in it. All right, so what I hope this game has highlighted is basically that there are many good sources of fiber that are outside of just our whole grain group. So we talk a lot about whole grains and fiber, but you can get it from different um, items and, and ingredients. So I hope you take this into consideration uh, next time you're out shopping or in a restaurant and you can remember that there's other ways to get your fiber. Okay, let's move on to the next part of the plate. Uh, with this part of the plate, we're going to discuss protein foods. So you want your protein foods to be a quarter of your plate, uh, and it should be consumed regularly as they're there important for us to help build muscles and to maintain and repair our body tissues. Protein can also have an effect on the brain that influences our mood. Protein foods are important because they provide us with iron. So meat, for example, is a great, great source of iron, which helps deliver oxygen from our lungs to the rest of our body. Calcium, which you can find in dairy products, such as milk, yogurt, and cheese, contain calcium and vitamin A, and some have actually been also fortified with vitamin D. So calcium is important for our bone health and reduces the risk of osteoporosis and fracture in older adults. Adding that vitamin D can help boost the amount of calcium that can enter the body. So that's why a lot of products have actually been fortified with vitamin D. Uh, protein foods are a source of fat, uh, which we will talk about in a little bit more detail later. So I'll just leave that for now. Um, but I will move on to our sources of protein. So here we have two kind of sources. We have our animal-based and then our plant-based. So among these sources, Canada's Food Guide suggests that we consume plant-based more often. 
These proteins can provide us with more fiber and have less saturated fat than any other type of protein food like meat and dairy. So the animal sources include things like lean red meat, which can include our wild game for your hunters out there, uh, poultry, fish and shellfish, eggs, dairy products like milk, cheese, and yogurt. I just want to take a moment here to kind of just note that although milk is no longer outlined separately on the plate in Canada's food guide, it is still important and can be incorporated in the protein section of the plate, or it can be just served like we've often shown it before as a beverage, so a glass of milk, or it can be your dessert such as yogurt or frozen yogurt. So I just really wanna make sure that although it's not identified specifically on that new plate, it is still important and would be included in this protein part of the plate. So let's look at the plant-based proteins. That's on the right side of your screen there. Those include things like soy products. So tofu, tempeh, edamame, and your textured vegetable protein. So those will kind of be in that area. We also have legumes. So we have our lentils, our beans, our split peas, our chickpeas. Um, and so certain legumes are also known as pulses too. So if you kind of hear those interchangeably. We also have our nuts and our nut butters. And we have seeds. And then the last one listed here is fortified soy beverage. So I know there's a lot of different plant-based beverages out there right now. So you have like your almond, your cashew, your rice, your flax, your oat, your hemp. Um, so those just note that they don't have enough protein to be considered a protein food in terms of Canada's food plate. So just wanted to put that out there, but fortified soy beverage, uh, what? All right, so let's look what else. There, mental health tidbit. So vitamin B12, which is found naturally in animal-based foods, um, can help us with our confusion and our poor memory. So it is also uh, added to fortified products like soy so that we can make sure that we can get that vitamin B12. But another good source of vitamin B12 is nutritional yeast which is an inactive yeast um, that's made usually from sugar cane and beet molasses. So people who are vegetarians or vegans would use nutritional yeast as a substance for cheese uh, because they have similar flavors. So both of them are creamy and can be made into those yummy, thick sauce-like consistencies that we all uh, enjoy. All right, so that's our mental, mental health tidbit there. So fat, so I said I would uh, discuss fat later, so I'm gonna go into that right now. So fat generally, unfortunately, gets a bad reputation, uh, but it should be consumed in moderation as it plays several important roles in our bodies. It insulates our organs, it helps regulate our temperature, and it's the building blocks for our body's hormones. So our bodies can't make essential fat, and so we need to get these from the food in order for us to survive. So fat provides us and helps us absorb vitamin D, E, A, and K. Fat provides us with the energy and the vitamins that are necessary for maintaining our vision and also healthy skin. So there are two types of fats that we're going to go over, which are the unhealthy and the healthy fats. So in our, um, in our unhealthy fats, let's talk about saturated fats. So we've got our bacon and our ice cream up there. So they usually come from animal sources like meat, cheese, butter, and lard. A really good quick trick to know if there's fat is saturated or not is is it solid at room temperature? So it will be solid if it is a saturated fat. There are some exceptions to this, including some tropical oils like coconut oil, palm kernel oil, and other palm oils. So if we consume too much saturated fat, it can lead to heart disease. So that's why we call it the unhealthy fat. Another uh, form of unhealthy fat is our trans fat. So these actually raise bad cholesterol levels, which can make them a risk for heart disease. Note they are naturally present in some foods, such as dairy, beef, and lamb, but 
They are primarily produced in the food industry during the processing of vegetable oils as partially hydrogenated oils. So these types of oils are added to foods to help make them taste better, texture, and mostly to extend the shelf life. So foods that you're gonna find trans fats would be cookies, chips, crackers, and cakes. All right, sounds all glum, but I have some good news, uh, is that as of 2018, Canada has banned companies from being able to add these oil to our products, which is great news. All right, let's move on to the healthy fats. So we have our unsaturated fats. So these are what we call heart healthy fats. The quick trick, that's kind of hard to say, the quick trick to know if a fat is unsaturated is it is liquid at room temperature. So examples would be things like olive oil, canola oil, avocado, and then you can also get it from nuts, cold water fish like salmon and mackerel. So those are our unsaturated fats. So mental health tidbit. Did you know that omega-3 fatty acids are a type of unsaturated fat? and that they are a heart healthy fat? Well, they are. And they're found in fish and seafood, nuts and seeds, and your plant oils. Omega-3 fatty acids can help us with depression. So good thing to kind of consume. Great. Okay, let's play another game. Uh, this one doesn't have any polls, um, but I'm gonna show you guys some pictures and then we're gonna go over what would be the better option between certain types of foods. So we have two things up here. We have having four KFC, so Kentucky Fried Chicken, chicken wings, or having one roasted chicken leg. So let's take a peek here. The four wings, 44 grams of fat. Let's compare that with the one roasted chicken leg. That has six. So our better option in this scenario would be to have that roasted chicken leg. So although I have an entire chicken in that picture, we're just talking about one roasted chicken leg. Let's look at another comparison here. We have <laughs> some McDonald's small fries or a baked potato. Let's look. So. In that small fries from McDonald's, we have 12 grams of fat. The baked potato, zero. Notice, however, that baked potato doesn't have anything on it. So it doesn't have the sour cream and the butter and the bacon bits and the green onions on it. So it's just Yeah, that I'm not potato. getting excited. <laughs> I'm not getting excited about that baked potato, Amy. But look at the better, it's a better option, Darren. <laughs> I understand that, but I'm just having a hard time getting excited about that. <laughs> Oh boy. All right, let's look at this. You guys go to the deli counter. What are we gonna get? We're gonna get bologna or deli turkey. Ounce of each, let's compare. We got five grams in that bologna and one gram in the turkey. So your option would be to pick that turkey over the bologna. And lastly, we have some, of course, gotta look at those desserts um, or snacks, I guess. You could have either a small plain donut, again, plain, no icing, no sugar, and half a cup of frozen yogurt. So with that one, we've got 11 grams of fat for that donut and four grams of fat for the frozen yogurt. Okay. So that's our fat wise game. So I hope that that kind of just brings to attention kind of some comparisons of some different foods uh, that and showing you which one would be the better option in that case. Okay, so up to this point, I've talked a lot about healthy eating and what our plates should look like. Uh, but I do wanna go over briefly a few foods and ingredients that can undermine that healthy eating. So we're gonna to refer to these as the three S's. So the first one is salt. So salt is made up of two elements, sodium and chloride. As far as our health is concerned, we are worried about sodium content in food. So that's why our labels, our food labels, outline sodium on them. The next S is sugar. So free sugars are the sugars that are added to foods and drinks. 
Note that free sugars are naturally present in honey, syrups, fruit juices, and your fruit juice concentrates. Free sugars do not include those naturally occurring sources of sugars that you're gonna find in whole or cut fruit, and that you're gonna find in vegetables, or that you're gonna find in unsweetened milk. And then the last S is saturated fat, which we will remember from just a few slides ago, is solid at room temperature. So we already talked about uh, saturated fat, so this time I'm going to focus on salt and sugar in a bit more detail. Okay, so adults should have less than 2,300 milligrams of sodium each day. To put that into perspective, one teaspoon of salt has 2,325 milligrams. So 75 to 80% of total sodium comes from processed foods. So things like canned foods, processed meats, and those pre-prepared meals. If we have too much excess dietary sodium, it can increase our blood pressure and therefore can increase our risk of heart disease and stroke. So we wanna cut down on our sodium. The ways to do that would be to use less salt in our cooking, have less processed foods, and have more fresh ingredients, uh, avoid those salty snacks, have fast food in moderation. You might wanna use the low sodium or no salt sodiums um, that are low in sodium. So if you can find soya sauces that have less sodium, um, low sodium bouillon cubes for, for cooking, low sodium soups. Uh, one thing on low sodium soups though is that they will still have a lot of sodium in them, even the low sodium varieties. Another good tip is if you're one who tends to put the salt on at the table, remove that salt shaker completely. Uh, instead, maybe add some spices, herbs, so instead of adding that salt. So things you could add would be vinegars, hot sauce, garlic, lemon, lime, garlic powder. Please note here I'm talking the powder, not garlic salt. Uh, you could add onions, red pepper, black pepper. So there's lots of different things you can add to your food um, as opposed to just adding straight uh, salt. Okay, so we've talked about salt, let's talk about sugar. So, adults should have no more than 10 teaspoons of added sugar per day. So let's look at some common foods here on the screen and then we'll look at their sugar content. So here's a tasty treat. We have a Reese's peanut butter cup. So it's a one pack, so three of those little cups in there. That has 27 grams or seven teaspoons. So that's like 70% of your uh, added sugar in one little tasty snack. Okay, let's look at something else. Good old Canadian classic. We have our large Tim Hortons Double Double. This one has 24 grams or six teaspoons. So that's because it's double double, because it's got that sugar added to it, right? And it also has the uh, cream, which would have a little bit of sugar in it naturally. Okay, next up, Gatorade. So we've played a big game, sports, have that one liter of Gatorade lemon lime. What do we got in here? We got 56 grams or 14 teaspoons of sugar. So that is just giving you a quick view of some common foods and what those added sugars are in there. So again, this doesn't account for any naturally occurring sugars. This is just all sugars that have been added. Okay. So our final mental health tidbit for today is related to caffeine. So caffeine is often found in foods with high amounts of added sugars. So that's kind of why it's talked about now because we just talked about added sugars. So too much caffeine can actually increase our anxiety and our depression. It can also cause headaches, irritability, nervousness, dehydration, and insomnia. 
All right, so I'm going to change gears here now. So we've talked a lot about how to reach your nutritional goals, what we'd like your plate to look like. So let's give you some um, assistance in how you're going to put this into practice. So let's talk about when you're out in that grocery store, or I guess for some of us right now with COVID, maybe when we're clicking our groceries into our cart on the website. Let's think about things that we can do that will help. So before you go to the store, you really want to try menu planning. So I've listed here two websites that are super helpful, and I'll kind of briefly go over them. So the supercook.com is a great website to use to help you use what you already have at home. So you would type in the ingredients that you have, and then the website will instantly find you some matching recipes from some popular cooking websites. So using what you already have. Or you can choose your ingredients from a list of categories on the left and then, or if you already have a dish in mind, you can search for it on that website as well. So that's a good one. Another great tool is um, unlockfood.ca. So this one actually has a menu planning template on it and has helpful information related to food and nutrition. So that's kind of what you can do in terms of menu planning. Other things you want to do is cook from scratch whenever possible and plan to make enough for leftovers. It's going to be cheaper than buying those prepared products. Another option would be to try to eat meatless two times a week using those inexpensive yet filling foods such as tofu, beans, lentils, pasta, or rice. You want to plan ahead, make a shopping list, and stick to it. So avoid kind of seeing those last minute put in your cart items. Um, also check your grocery store flyers for sale items. Bring a calculator with you to determine what the best value is among package sizes. Uh, try having like a specific um, jar or try to set aside a certain amount for food and stick to that. Um, so that's kind of related to setting a budget. Um, and you'll want to try shopping only once a week and big one. I know I make this mistake a lot, but try to eat before you shop because when you're hungry, you will buy more than you need. That's a really good, that's a really good tip for sure. Yes, it is. So some other things that you can do while you're in the grocery store. So this can be in terms of saving money or just buying kind of healthier options. So this would be displays. So what I mean there is check the upper and lower store shelves for store brands and low cost alternatives. So grocery stores tend to put the pricier items at eye level. So try to look up and down. You'll wanna buy in bulk, uh, but with this one you wanna be aware of shelf life and only buy as much as you need. I know right now that's a little bit challenging uh, with COVID as well because all the bulk things are kind of prepackaged for you. Uh, but I have noticed that they do put things in smaller containers uh, and kind of have a variety of sizes. So they're trying to make it a little bit easier for folks to buy it that way. Um, when you're buying um, meats, especially if you're going to put something in like a stew, you can buy that less expensive cut because it's going to be cooking for a long period of time. So trying to find uh, dishes that will allow you to buy the least expensive cut of meat. Um, when you have items that can't be frozen, buy only what you can use. So if you can't freeze something, try to just make sure you're not going to waste it and make sure you can use it throughout the week. You can try to just buy fresh fruits and vegetables only when they're in season. So this one always makes me think of cherries. I know cherries are super expensive when you buy them uh, off season. They're still expensive in season, but can be a lot less expensive at that time of year. So just try to buy in season. Uh, you can also buy frozen or canned products, which I talked a lot about earlier. If you want to change it up, uh, you can try buying some meat alternatives. Those are a bit cheaper, like beans and lentils. Um, and this is a good tip, too. When you're buying bread, try to purchase the freshly made, high-fiber, low-fat bread from your grocery store bakery. So those grocery store bakery breads are actually uh, less expensive than your prepackaged Wonder Bread or deli style bread or whatever it may be. And then the last one is make at home instead of prepackaged. 
So an example here would be to cook plain oats and add fruit instead of buying the expensive instant oatmeal packages. So those are some tips when you're actually at the grocery store. I hope those help. Um, so in the webinar today, I have actually included a handout. Um, if you look on your screen somewhere, it's, there should be a button that looks like a piece of paper with a piece of the flap of the paper bent over, or depending, it might also say handouts on it. So this will be depending if you're looking at this webinar through an app or on a desktop. But what the uh, handout is, is it's just a PDF copy of that food guide. Uh, so if you are unable to download it from the button here on the webinar, not a problem, email us after and I can send you a copy. We may, why don't we even make a, put a link to it at the bottom when we put the video up, the whole yeah, video. Right. There is a link actually at the bottom of this page on the screen. It says canada.ca slash food guide. So that's where you'll oh. be able to find it as well. Nice. Yeah. Uh, but for right now, you guys can just look at the image on your screen. Um, and this is actually what's pictured on the backside or the second page of Canada's food guide. So what it does is it highlights helpful tips that go beyond just discussing the food that we eat. So uh, for time purposes, I won't be able to go through all of these, but the things that they talk about is just being mindful of your eating habits, uh, trying to cook more often. So we've talked about that in a few places, really enjoying your food. So if you enjoy your food, um, it just is gonna make everything feel better. That can definitely relate to our mood as well. Uh, try to eat meals with others. I know this has been a challenge during uh, COVID-19. Uh, one thing I've done is I've actually done FaceTimes with my mom who lives in a different city while we're eating. So we're both eating, but we're just through FaceTime. So something you can do. Um, other thing would be to use those food labels. So we didn't go over food labels today, but that's absolutely something that you can click more information on on the food guide um, and super important to use those labels. Uh, we talked about those three S's. So we want to limit foods that are high in sodium, sugar or saturated fat. And then to be aware of food marketing. So there's always little keywords that the, the food industry wants you to see. So there's a lot of helpful information on that. So all of these um, uh, headings that I have in a circle here, if you are to click on those, if you're online, it actually takes you to additional information. So each one of these, um, it has a bunch more information online. So if you are able to go online and take a peek, that will be able to give you more information. Okay, so that's all I have for uh, today. I wanna thank you all very much for listening and participating in those polls and the games. And I guess I'll open it up and see if there are any questions. Not seeing any yet. I'm just so, so good, I covered it all. <laughs> we covered all of our food related questions, Amy. Thank you very much. Uh, should we wait here a little bit? I mean, if if you have any questions after, I guess, should, where, where can they send them? Uh, there's going to be, you're going to get an email after, and you can just email it to info at wellnessinstitute.ca, and then that can get forwarded along to myself. Uh, just one thing to keep in note is that the Living Better program uh, contains information like this, plus a lot more related to um, physical activity. Um, we do like kind of like food demos. So I just really wanted to kind of give a little bit of information on nutrition, uh, especially because March is Nutrition Month. So I wanted to give that. Um, and I really hope that we'll be able to offer the Living Better program in person, in group settings, uh, virtually, so that we can get more people to take this, this great program. We've got a question here. Uh, Ooh, what about okay. dried fruit? So what dried about fruit. dried fruit? Uh, are they considered healthy or unhealthy because of the additives and sugar? So your dried fruit is going to give you and will be a serving on your half a plate. Um, that being said, it does often have a lot of sugar added to it for it to be preserved, for it to stick. Uh, so just be mindful reading your labels. Um, this will be especially important if you're doing it as a 
snacking right out of the bag. Uh, I will always say to be more mindful, kind of maybe just have like a quarter of a cup or just measure it out in a small bowl. Uh, that way you know you're getting the nutrients that you'll get from that dried fruit, but not gonna consume too much and have that added uh, sugar. Uh, also too, if you're um, a diabetic, I'm not gonna go into that too much, but just be, be aware that there is a lot of added sugar uh, beyond the natural sugar that exists in that fruit. We have another question. question here. Yes, mm -hmm. I think so. Um, another question here. Soy used to have a bad rep due to containing hormones. Is that still true? Sorry, you know I anything about part. soy sauce? Meat? Oh, soy. soy is uh, no, soy. Oh, soy. Yeah. Oh, okay. Soy. Yeah. So, soy. Um, I was I actually wanted to touch on soy. So, thank you for bringing that up. I want to go back to the slide that had. Oh man, we have to go through all the. I don't know what slide it is. Okay. Um, okay, soy. So uh, I think that with soy, a lot of them, they are made from fermented soybeans that you form into a block. So like your tempeh or your um, textured vegetable proteins, uh, which we call TSP, is kind of their thing. Um, a lot of those ones, um, I don't know. I, I, now I forget the question. Something about bad rep for... Uh, so soy having hormones, does it still have hormones, hormones or what's, what's the deal with uh, that, soy these you days? You know what? I actually don't know. I, I, what I've read, um, was just how, kind of how it's made and it's by extracting soybean oil. I don't know if there's, um, hormones in it. I actually, I don't know the answer to that question. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Well, we can, uh, we can look uh, into that. We can look into that. You, so if you write down the name, off. I can look into that and, and get back to that individual. It can do, uh, can do. So um, sugar crush in kids, uh, crush in kids, is this myth or a real thing, a sugar crush? I'm not 100% sure what that- Oh, uh, like where that, kids like eat so much sugar, get super excited and then crash after? I think, I think so, yeah, crash, yes. Yet? Sugar um, crash, yeah. I, I mean, if you give anybody a lot of sugar, they're going to get a lot of that boost in that glucose. Um, going to go to their, going to give them a lot of fuel for their mind and their body, making them more active. Um, I think it really just depends on people how they digest the sugar. So everyone's going to digest certain things differently. So, for example, with caffeine, some people will, you know, be super reactive to caffeine, and then some people won't. So I think the same can go for sugar. Um, I do think though that that gives them a lot more energy, just because there's a lot more of that release of that that um, fuel for our body and our mind. So, and then afterwards, after we've uh, made our pancreas work super hard uh, in clearing that all out, um, it, it could give them a crash afterwards. And then I guess they've also got to keep tabs on that seven or 10 grams. I guess that 10 grams was for an adult. That's yeah, not even so for a sugar for kids, too, right? Yeah, I think, yeah, it said for, a, yeah, so it'd be probably less um, in children. Gotcha. Okay. I think that is the end of the questions here. Uh, thank you, Amy, for your presentation. Thank you also to the Wellness Institute and Healthy Together Now. Uh, the recording of today's webinar, as well as other webinars uh, as part of the series, are available on the Wellness Institute website. So if you go to uh, wellnessinstitute.ca slash webinar, uh, this presentation will be up there shortly, uh, and you can see all of the other ones we've done in the past. Great. So thank you very much and stay well. Thank you. See you later. Oh. I'm going to end the session. <laughs>